Hello, welcome to another video. This is a differential equation and it is homogeneous because there's a zero on the right hand side so we don't have any function to figure out what it, it's equal to. In other videos I'm going to start doing the non-homogeneous differential equations. We know this is a second order differential equation. It is um, linear because there is no power of any of these terms but there is no x showing up. Well it looks as if you have x showing up but there's no x because I wrote it in this form. Ideally I should have written this this way. So as you can see it's all the derivatives of y and y there is no x so you say this is an autonomous differential equation. Um, what else do we know about it? The coefficients of these terms are all constants. There is no x, there is no y, there's nothing. So you notice that they're all constants. So we can describe this as a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. And remember I said it's autonomous in the first place because there is no x. Okay, I've told you all the names and everything about it. What is left is to solve it. And if you've seen other videos, whenever you solve an autonomous differential equation or just a homogeneous differential equation that looks like this, you want to say, I'm going to assume that the original function, which is the y, was an exponential function or a form of an exponential function. So you can say... Let y be equal to e to the rx. Now it is possible that y is not e to the rx and y is just something else, but we don't know. Well, if it is not e to the rx, we're going to find out after we get all our answers the first step. Okay, let's see if y is e to the rx. So the first thing we do is try to find what y prime is and what y double prime is. So we're going to say that y prime is the derivative of this function, which is going to be r e to the r x. And we're also going to find y double prime, which is going to be r squared e to the r x. So we have all the three ingredients for this equation and we can as well just write these and say r squared e to the rx plus r e to the rx plus e to the rx equals zero. So we have used these three values we got and substituted it into this function. Now we know that if we factor out the common term which is e to the rx, we're going to have r squared plus r plus one equals zero. And we know that e to the rx cannot be equal to zero because e to the rx is an exponential function. It can never be zero. So if the product of two things gives us a zero, one of them must be zero. So clearly this must be zero. And then we can go ahead and say r squared plus r plus one is equal to zero. So for this quadratic equation, we could as well just write our a. Let's say that a equals one, b, equals 1, c equals 1, because we know we cannot factor it. We have to use the quadratic formula, and then we have r will be minus b, which is minus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 squared, minus 4 times a times c. 4 times a times c is just going to be 4, divided by 2 times a, which is 2. So here we get negative 1, plus or minus the square root of minus 3 over 2. And that tells us that r is negative 1 over 2 plus or minus. Um, we know that the square root of negative 3 is going to be square root of 3i. So it's imaginary square root of 3 divided by 2. So our solution has a real part and an, and an imaginary part. So just imagine that since y, as we claimed from the beginning, is e to the rx, 
implies that y equals e to the negative one half plus or minus or minus i square root of three over two. But we know that whenever you have plus or minus, it means multiplication or division. But for the sake of this, I am going to just show you the general rule you get when you get this for R. So I don't know if I should do this, but I want you to understand what's about to happen. We can say that Y is equal to, oh, sorry, multiplied by X. Okay, there's an X here. So if we distribute the x, it looks like this is going to be e to the negative x over 2 times e to the plus or minus. I'm just going to show you this, okay? i times square root of 3 over 2x. Now, the biggest issue we're going to have is whether this is plus or minus. But for now, for this video, I want you to ignore it and just know that generally... Let's do it here. Generally, if after you solve your quadratic equation, you have r is equal to a real part of the solution, which looks like the negative one half that we have right now, plus or minus imaginary omega. If this is the solution you have, which looks like what we have this time, the general solution is always e to the lambda x multiplied by c1 cosine omega plus c2 sine omega. The imaginary does not show any more in the answer. In another video, I'm going to explain why that is true. But for now, this is the sequence you want to make sure you master. And here we go. So, and that's what I'm trying to show here. But remember that from Euler's equation, we know by Euler's equation, by Euler's equation, we know that e to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. And it is on this basis that we're going to transform this side so that our general formula, your y, will be equal to, I hope I have not confused anyone, will be equal to this part, e to the negative x over two multiplied by, we're gonna apply this to this. Don't worry about the plus or minus, but let's just take this. Whenever you have this, it's gonna be the cosine of this plus the sine, well, this is i, but ignore the i because we can replace the i with a constant. So let's do that. C1 cosine x plus c2, sorry, cosine, not x. What's the argument we have here? Square root of three over two plus sine square root of three over two x. And this is the solution. We don't know what c1 is, we don't know what c2 is, but we can always find it by solving an initial value problem based on this um, differential equation. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.